Now, you've probably heard about the merge, but let's break down exactly what these changes are going to do to the Ethereum network to be able to ensure its sustainability long term and also ensure that the network can increase in speed and make it a much better user experience for the users. So let's dive into what this merge is, how it will affect Ethereum, and also could it potentially lead to Ethereum flipping Bitcoin? I will answer that question in this video because I think it's a very, very interesting question. So basically the Ethereum merge, uh, the first part of the merge is scheduled for June 22. So in three months, we are getting the first change to the Ethereum network. And it is a major upgrade. It's one of the biggest upgrades the Ethereum network has ever seen. So the merge, as I said before, is the transition from proof of work to proof of stake. Uh, ETH1 or the existing version of ETH that we're currently using uh, is kind of an execution layer. And ETH2 is obviously the consensus layer. And they're blending together to make the network a lot faster. So that's why we call it the merge, because we're getting the blending of ETH1 and ETH2. They did change the Ethereum Foundation. They changed the name of the mer of ETH2 to the merge, because ETH2.0 was kind of confusing for a lot of people. There's a lot of questions like, why is it called ETH2.0? Is ETH being replaced? And the simple answer to that is no. It's simply just the name for a bunch of changes being rolled out. So the foundation decided to simply call it the ETH merge. A lot of groundwork has been needed to execute this merge successfully. Uh, they had to create a beacon chain, which already exists. Uh, they had to work up, um, work up a lot of the network to be able to ensure that this could be implemented in a secure and safe manner. So there has been a lot of groundwork done over the last th couple of years, and that's why it's been so, so delayed. But we are going to see the first major change. The first major change happening post-merge is this new issuance. So the first step of the merge in June, and this is what a lot of people are talking about right now, is a reduction in issuance by 90%. This means that the supply of Ethereum will undergo a 90% cut of daily emissions. Currently, the daily emissions on Ethereum, so that's the amount of new Ethereum being minted onto the network, uh, is 12,000 a day. And as it currently stands, Ethereum is completely inflationary. So it doesn't, it, it continues to mint and there's no burning mechanism, meaning there'll be more and more Ethereum tokens flooded onto the market over the coming years if these changes were not implemented. However, these changes are going to change everything because now the emissions on Ethereum will be cut from 12,000 down to 1,280, which means the yearly inflation on Ethereum, which is currently sitting at 4.3%, will now decrease to 0.4%. And I have some interesting st statistics that I'll show you in a second to suggest Ethereum could become fully deflationary, which is very exciting. This will increase rewards for proof of stake validators. So one of the major things that we're going to see is increased rewards for uh, holders. So previously, the rewards on Ethereum were quite low, maybe a few percent a year. But now the stakers on Ethereum will be receiving close to 10 to 12% a year, which is very big news. Let's look at this other thread because I think it's uh, interesting to contextualize how these changes will be laid out. So there are, are three major phases to what they were previously calling ETH 2.0 or now the merge. ETH 2.0 is three phases. So obviously the, firstly, the first change, which was a few months ago, was the beacon chain. So this was uh, implementing a separate chain from the mainnet that's being used to run proof of stake consensus mechanism. So this enables you to stake and this enables the Ethereum network to alleviate some of that pressure on the main chain. Number two is the merge. This is the major change happening in June. And this is the change where the Ethereum inflation is reduced uh, to make Ethereum essentially deflationary, um, which will be a massive uh, catalyst for holders because their tokens will be worth more over time. So the merge is a major factor that's happening at the moment. Now, this merge actually does not affect gas fees. So this merge and the, in, in, and the process of this change is purely to change the tokenomics. It's to make the if Ethereum inflation less severe. However, the major thing that people want to see is the network becoming faster and cheaper. And this major change will happen through sharding. So this change is not happening until likely 2023. And this is the solution to ETH scaling problems to get that TPS from around 13 transactions a second up to thousands of transactions a second like we can see on chains like AVAX and Phantom potentially. So this is the major change that will increase scalability. But you have to remember that these changes in June are purely to focus on the deflationary aspect of Ethereum. So let's look at how much deflation will actually be occurring. Because if we want to work out if this will actually affect the Ethereum price, we have to evaluate how much this will affect the emissions. So I have a lovely site here. Uh, this site is called Ultrasound. And this website tracks 
all the ETH supply against the burn to work out whether at any given moment Ethereum is inflationary or deflationary. If we look at the statistics through the current amount of ETH being created and the current amount of ETH being burnt, we can see that it is currently emitting 1.9% a year based on current supply growth. However, this can be even higher, up to 4%, as we saw on the last thread, uh, if the supply growth increases during a certain period, uh, like it was earlier in the year. However, after the merge, so after these changes are implemented uh, in July, we are going to see, or June rather, we're going to see a, a deflation of 2.2% a year. Now, this may not happen straight away because this supply growth is being based on the entirety of data. So all the data we have uh, in terms of the previous Ethereum supply. But based on our future projections, using this graph, we can come to a reasonable conclusion that Ethereum will be a deflationary asset. And this will mean that potentially the supply versus the, um, versus the amount of Ethereum that's being issued will equate to a minus 2.2% deflation for the Ethereum network. This is a major change. And obviously, the less Ethereum being supplied and the more Ethereum being burnt means that the Ethereum price will go up as the demand can eventually outweigh the supply of Ethereum. So this is a major factor for Ethereum holders and holders of other cryptocurrencies alike because Ethereum is becoming a lot more efficient. If you like this clip, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification. You'll be notified every time that we drop content on this channel. This channel is dedicated to people just like you who are time-starved and need a microdose of crypto content.